Hello, I'm Albatross. I'm Ryan Nessus. I'm Snake Eyes. We're the Brothers Hermit, and you know, we haven't been here this that much this year, so we're here now to do a true for a given value of instant of the movies of 2013. That we saw. So sort of. Yeah. Maybe. I forgot most of them. <laughs> Hansel and Gretel. Hansel? Hansel! Okay. So, basically what you got was a Sam Raimi wannabe director, who did a very good job at having fun with Sammy Ra Sam Raimi type, you know, camera shots. Uh, a movie that wanted to be Evil Dead and came very close to doing so and had a rip start and good time doing it. And it starred Hawkeye from The Avengers, who I really want to see be an action star, so really good in my book. Yeah, basically it was Hansel and Gretel as two badasses in, you know... In fairy tale times. Where can you go wrong? Go see it. As first movies of the year go, War Bodies, not a bad start. It's basically just Romeo and Juliet with zombies. They're not even trying to hide it. His name is R, her name is Julia. It's not very deep. You knew what you were getting when you went in. Eh, worth it. Side effects. Alright, I know I said Elysium was bad, but here is a movie I think is a strong contender for worst movie of the year, if not one of the worst I've ever seen. It was supposed to be a psychological thriller, you know, kind of like a conspiracy theory or something like that, where the movie's shifting on you and, and it just spins you around and you don't know what's coming next. Well, do you know what was coming next? Yeah. Always. It was really bad. The main character who was supposed to be solving the crimes was completely unlikable. Um, Complicit in some said crimes. Oh yeah, and, and, and don't even get don't even get me started on what he did at the end of the movie, which might have been one of the mo worst things that happened in that movie. The uh, the murder was completely unbelievable, um, and the conspiracy behind it was. It was the worst heel turn by a protagonist I've ever seen outside of the WWE, and those are more believable than his. <sighs> and it took a scene with Catherine Zeta-Jones, which should have been sexy, because, you know, Catherine Zeta-Jones is kind of hot, and made it possibly the most unsexy thing I've ever seen. I don't know how you screw that up. Die Hard 5. I don't think it was a Die Hard movie. Yeah. It had Bruce Willis in it. Yeah, but that does not a Die Hard movie make. Though he is in all the rest. <sighs> Honestly, the sun element was just... It was badly played. You never believed he was like they were actually father and son. It wasn't even entertaining the arguing with each other. It had made more sense to have the, the son be just a different character who's not his son, but like a former CIA agent or something that he's messing around with in Moscow. This was disjointed, a lot of action, a lot of explosions, but not that good. And it was sponsored by BMW, I thought. Yeah, I believe it was sponsored by BMW. Jack the Giant Slayer. Not a bad movie. Not a terribly good one, either. It had some decent action scenes. It actually tried to keep you guessing. Few too many stupid moments for me to truly give it the recommendation, though. Saint may lead his warm bodies, though. Like they were trying to give this guy a push. I don't see him going anywhere, though. Oz the Great and Powerful! Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. They'd like you to not pay attention to the man behind the curtain, and probably also the problems with the Wicked Witch of the West. I think, I think my favorite thing about the Wicked Witch of the West is it turns out that she's not evil by her own volition, so everything she does is really kind of, I don't know, twisted? Honestly, look, I'm... It was kind of trying to tell the same story as the Wizard of Oz in a different Except time Except the main character was a dick. Very much a dick. I'm not a fan, if you can't pull it off with a lot of panache, I am not a fan of the 
oh, well, I mean, you know, uh, you know, scoundrel with a heart of gold, and what can I actually do? Oh, wait, these hidden talents I have all along that, that, that turn out to be the most oh, powerful thing. No, no, you're forgetting, you're forgetting the generic plot point where if I am a scoundrel with a heart of gold, I have to really seriously screw up. And only then, after I screw up and I see how terrible my screw up was, then can I become a hero. Yeah, sorry, that is way too played out and just not befitting of an Oz movie. Did not enjoy this. I mean, like, the special effects were done well, but we've seen enough special effects done well, we don't need to sit through this movie. It could have been done better, but truly, the next Oz movie looks so much worse that we'll probably be looking at this as a relatively good movie. There's yeah. another Oz movie. And it's a horrifying thought. Yes, it's 3D animated. G.I. Joe! Retaliation. I don't know what they were trying to retaliate us against with, but... Uh, Our I enjoyment of the first. Yeah. All in all, as stupid, dumb movies go, it is far from the worst thing I've ever seen. But as a stupid, dumb action, dumb action movie, it's enjoyable... But as a continuation to the first stupid, dumb action movie, eh, I think they jam-packed it with too many stars. Like, we didn't need The Rock and Bruce Willis yeah. like, together. I mean, yeah, I would love to see The Rock and Bruce Willis in another movie, but I think at the expense of what they did it for... They marketed Channing Tatum as the, the lead role of the movie. They Spoilers! They marketed Channing Tatum as the lead role of the movie, and that was already a mistake. Um, and, uh, I'm sorry, but he is the rock. We know he knows how to choreograph. There is no excuse for the amount of shaky cam they had in his main one-on-one -on -one fight scene. None whatsoever. And if it was because the other actor was incompetent at fighting, you should have found a better actor. It was a glorified extra. But hey, hey, at least you know what the rock is cooking. Cobra. <laughs> <laughs> Oblivion. What can I say about this one? It tried. It really did. And better to fail while trying than to fail while not. I will say I really enjoyed it, but a lot of that is because I was laughing at it. Um, some of the plot points were just a little too predictable. Some of them I predicted even before I entered the theater. And the main bad guy was both incredibly idiotic and incredibly yonic. Make of that what you will. Um, all in all, like I said, better to have failed while trying. Many of the movies this year didn't even do that. Iron Man 3. I thought Iron Man 3 was fairly good. Yeah. It had a uh, very likable Tony Stark, uh, very interesting what he did. It made sense for him, but he clearly developed as a character from we, the first movie. We, 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 he developed it from a character from the first and second movie, and it brought in elements from the Avengers that you knew would have to take effect on a normal human being. And for the most part, unlike the rest of the Avengers, Tony Stark is just human, and so and is not a soldier, so is not used to dealing with what he saw. And we got to see some of the psychological element of somebody who went through what he did, which was great. And Ben Kingsley in this movie, oh my gosh. That's all I have to say. Yeah, I, I can't tell you anymore. We give it away. You've got to see Ben Kingsley. He does a great job. Star Trek into shit. To be fair, for a good portion of the movie, it was enjoyable. Not as enjoyable as the first, but still an enjoyable movie. And then it takes a turn where they throw... Massive monkey wrench into the works. It fouls it all up. God! Yeah. Truly the greatest Englishman to play a Hispanic playing an Indian. See, the problem is, is that the first movie was great because you took all the classic Star Trek characters and you twisted them. You, you shook up how they all formed together, but you still had the characters you knew and loved but things were just a little different. It was enjoyable. In this movie, lots and lots and lots of references that were necessary. Reference on top of reference on top of reference. I get what they were going for. It could have been right if it was, it could have been good if it was handled better. But it just started becoming so overwhelming that it became stupid, insipid. Good movie up until the last 20 minutes. 
the last 20 minutes come pretty close to ruining everything. There were triples in this movie. Troubles with triples. <laughs> Man of Steel. Wow. Probably the most polarizing movie of the year. I enjoyed it. I I come down on the side of good. It was a good movie. Yeah. There were definitely some problematic elements with it. I had problems numerous times throughout the movie. But, you know what? One of the things I don't hear a lot of people say about this one is um, just about every major point that I was originally asking in the movie, why did this happen? Why did this person behave this way? Why, why were the Kryptonians acting like this? They actually, if you look at what was going on, there's a perfectly good explanation. They actually did show and not tell. And I've got to give them major credit for that. I think a lot of the alleged problems of this movie can be solved if you just tell yourself that this is not any other incarnation of Superman that this, you're watching. It's its own yeah. thing. This is not Christopher Reeve's Superman. This is not this is not Bruce Timm's Superman. This is not the DC Comics Superman. This is an alternate universe Superman. And that I mean and yes, it's gonna cross paths with uh, with a Batman, but it's also that's going to be an alternate universe Batman. Not the Christopher Nolan stuff. So it was different. I enjoyed it. I liked it. I don't see why Jimmy Olsen had to be a woman. Fundamentally, though, I would have saved the whole thing that happened with Zod at the end. I would have either saved that for another movie, or I would have made it abundantly, abundantly clear how much it affected Superman. T to be fair, this is not the first time Zod died. In Superman 2, Superman killed Zod in that one, too. So, the only difference is, he snapped his neck in here, and in the second one, he fell into a cloud. The internship. Google, why must you ruin everything? That's your review? It was awful. Not even trying, are you? I try more than Google does. <laughs> World War Z would be my front-runner for most infuriating movie of the year. If it weren't for one or two others that seem hell-bent on taking that title themselves. I don't understand how you take a very popular book by a very popular author who is the son of a very popular director, and you put nothing from that book in the movie except for the title. An eight-second incubation period doesn't even make sense for a zombie outbreak, and there are yet more plot holes that are just so glaring, I don't, I don't need to point them out. Lots of other people have already done that. If you can get past all of that, it's an enjoyable, stupid, action zombie movie, but I couldn't. I expected too much, and that's not something I often say. The movie that showed us that you don't have to go to college to get ahead in life. But I've said too much. <laughs> Monsters University is a movie, when I first heard about it, I, I didn't really think it needed to be made. I, I, I wasn't sure where they were going with it. I didn't feel a prequel was necessary for Monsters Incorporated. And so I thought, like, are we just going to get Monsters Animal House? And when we first started watching, it's kind of what it felt like. But... They actually managed to go a pretty good route, take you where you didn't think they were going to go, and they definitely twisted you at the end. So, I definitely give it a watch, sir. It was a lot of fun. And it's really great for an interesting take on uh, Mike, uh, Mike's and Sully's relationship at the very beginning. So, definitely watch it. Despicable Me too. Was it as good as the first? Not a chance. Was it good? Yeah, I'd say so. I'd say it was worth a watch. I mean, yeah, it wasn't as good as the first, but the the comedy elements from the first were there. Yeah, the depth was not. The first Despicable Me was very surprising in it. The second one kept giving me moments I swore were setting up for a surprise. But it and was it, funny. It was very funny. Yeah, yeah, it was funny. But boy, no, 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 no. A 
Papai! Oh, Papai! Red 2. What can I say? It's not red. I wish it were. I'm not saying it's bad, but red was really fun and red 2 was really derivative and honestly just the writing's not that great on it. You, you say, how can you complain about the writing in a schlock action movie, but you see Red 2, you'll see why I do. Honestly, no aspect of it stands out. Alicia, one of the movies that I put is possibly one of the worst of the year. It's designed to be a sci-fi well, sci movie. It's meant to be a highbrow sci-fi movie. What it is, is a dumb sci-fi movie that is incredibly pretentious. Um, none of it makes any sense. The entire world and structure that it's built on makes no sense. The rich built a space station so they don't have to live on Earth. But the people on Earth still must do their bidding from the, their you know, palace in the sky. And they live on the Earth and wallow and have nothing. Yes, because, you know, I don't know about you, but if everything's sitting up there and I've got nothing, I'm going to work for the people up there. No. And then the main character, Matt Damon, can't figure out what he wants to do, what he wants, where he wants to go. It's constantly changing. Am I a good guy? Am I a bad guy? Am I trying to help myself or help my friends? It's a horrible, disjointed, stupid movie with a villain that looks like an evil Jim Henson. And there's nothing funny about it. Like, you can't even go, oh, it's funny to laugh at. No. Elysium. Horrible movie. Don't buy it. Don't rent it. If it's on TV, keep going. And that's one of my picks for worst movie of the year. The World's End. This was possibly the best movie I saw all year. This was possibly the best Simon Pegg movie of anything he's done. Better than Shaun of the Dead? At least tied with it. I, look, I thought that the trailers had given this one a huge disservice by giving away one of the major elements of what was going on. Even with that giveaway, was... this movie surprised me. Oh, it was amazing where it went, and you spend a good portion of the movie like not liking the main character. And guess what? You weren't supposed to. But you're sitting there going like, I always like Simon Pegg. I mean, Shaun of the Dead, yay, he can be a bit of a dick, but he's a likable character. And Hot Fuzz, yay, he's a bit of an uptight dick, but he's kind of fun. And this one, you're like, eh, I don't like you at all. He has, I mean, this character in particular and his best friend, uh, they have so much depth. So much depth went into the writing of these two characters that it really makes for a great movie, seeing the relationship between the two of them. And what I love about these movies is the cinematography is fantastic. The camera work is amazing. The, the fight choreography is, is so well done. There's very little to no shaky cam. And the acting comes off well. And actually, for, an action, for a comedy action movie, this contains some of the best action scenes I've seen in years. Yeah, and I will say, the ending for a moment feels like it comes out of nowhere. And yet, I can't think of a better ending for the movie. And for the main character. I mean, it really makes sense what happens. Yeah. Nothing that happens to any of the characters is confusing. In easily, yeah. yeah, easily the, the most consistent, rewarding movie I've seen all year. Ender's Game. If you like the novel, you'll probably like the movie. If you like the novel and expected everything in the novel to be in the movie, well, where have you been for the past 10 years? That hasn't happened in a long time. And I think, unfortunately, I mean, this was a... I want to start off by saying this was a really great movie. Um, unfortunately for me, the most disappointing part of the movie was the stuff that was left out. I thought what was told was told well. Uh, Ender was cast really well in a very likable character and enjoyable character yes, to watch. Was. Um, and honestly, I just remember thinking when I got out, oh, this is a great movie. I just wish they had included all the stuff that they it, left There's out. a lot of side plot that makes it a really good novel, or a really great beginning to a series of novels, that being left out kind of made it felt like an incomplete, an incomplete movie from a book that felt very complete. Right. And, I mean, it was a good movie. It's definitely worth a watch. I'm definitely going to add it to my collection, but 
it was lacking in some uh, in certain elements. Thor two, much better than Thor one. That's not particularly high bar to set, but really enjoyable. Much better in the fact that Thor two had a story. Yeah, wasn't setting up for another movie. Uh, Thor was actually a developed character. Loki was Loki was a developed character. He well continued to be a developed character. It was really interesting what they did with their relationship. Uh, believable and likable. If I had to say one downside, it would be that um, I didn't realize the main bad guy was Christopher Eccleston. He did a good job, but I didn't see Eccleston. And, and I wish I had, because I actually want to see him get a little more credit. Catching Fire. Hmm. Um, sequel to The Hunger Games. Uh, an all in all better movie. I think it was done well, the music was good, it was fairly intense, so definitely not a kid's movie. Um, I thought it was fun. Um, I mean, there were certain parts, I believe, that were left out from the book. I can't really speak to that, but I did hear that. Uh, they did an overall good job, and I'd recommend seeing it if you have the chance. Delivery Man. Vince Vaughn's second comedy of the year where the character Vince plays finds out that he is the father to over 500 children. Yes, I know. I had a similar thought when I heard about that, which is, this is going to be horrifying. Amazingly not as bad as you think it would be. It handled it a lot more intelligently than I could ever would have ever given Vince Vaughn credit for. So, if you have a chance, and you want to see it, go. If you weren't going to see it, <laughs> 47 Ronin and Keanu Reeves. Whoa. This movie was totally heinous. Bogus, man. Right. What can I say about this? You ever get the feeling you're watching two different movies at the same time? Yes. Yeah. There was one of two things happening here, alright? Either this was a joint venture between a Japanese production company and Hollywood, and they were both producing a movie, and they took it and they filmed some scenes to splice in for the American version. Or this was classic, classic Hollywood racism. And halfway through production, they realized, no, nope, we cannot let a Japanese man be the main lead. We're going to put in Keanu Reeves. I'm pretty sure it was this. Yeah. If you watch this movie, one of the things that becomes abundantly clear is Keanu Reeves isn't even in the same room most of these shots. It is those classic, ooh, we filmed him in a set that looks almost like what we already had, and just to make it look like he's there. And if you, if you go back and you look at the original tale of 47 Ronin, he has no part. He was completely thrown in for no point. Okay, they refer, I'm fairly certain they refer to this place as ancient Japan. And last time I checked, 18th century Japan in the Tokugawa era is not ancient Japan, and there's not much mythology going on there. No fox demons, no witches, no half demons. It makes no sense. No tentacular hair! You can take Keanu Reeves... Oh, maybe tentacles. You can take Keanu Reeves, the witch, and most of the, the Lord's Daughters parts out of this movie, and you will get a much better, much better paced movie. It's more in fitting, it's more in keeping with the story, all of that. It is abundantly clear something wasn't supposed to be here. And I don't, I, it's not that I think Keanu Reeves was terrible in this movie, but he wasn't supposed to it be It was here. a long-standing case of one of these things is not like the other. My favorite part the climax was clearly in different film quality than the rest of the movie, and it was noticeable when it happened. The climax also involved quite a bit of Keanu Reeves. Just saying. Well, that's it for us for the year. There are a number of movies we missed. The Hobbit. The Wolverine. Some other movie. Yeah. They may well, be good. They may be bad. Probably mostly bad. It wasn't that great a year for movies. but. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this year as much as we have. We'll bring um, you more next year. We hope you had a Merry Christmas or a Happy Hanukkah or whatever holiday or you celebrated. Have a Happy New Year. Yes. From the Brother Sermon, have a Happy New Year.